Hey there, Horse Center fans. Matt and I are back with another exciting edition of the show, Matt. Today, we're looking back at the Kentucky Derby, the Kentucky Oaks, but mainly we're looking ahead to the Preakness. Matt, how much did you bet on Medina Spirit? Oh, Brian. Oh, Brian. Let's talk about the Preakness, the second jewel of the Triple Crown coming up in Baltimore. Yeah, absolutely. Folks, our, our, our bets didn't quite come through. I, I was alive to eight horses on the pick six into the Kentucky Derby, and Medina Spirit wasn't one of them, even though I kind of liked him a few weeks ago. I talked myself off him. I figured Baffert couldn't win another, Matt. And that brings me to my next question for you. Is, is the Kentucky Derby now just as easy as betting on Bob Baffert? Or Brian, certainly uh, that's true. Or Brian, just simply betting on uh, the horse that's going to get the lead uh, coming out of the gate. It may not be that easy to figure out who that horse is, but Baffert has sure figured out that uh, if I tell my jockey to send out of the gate, at least we've got a chance to win the Derby. And once again, he gets a horse loose on the lead. And now he's the leading winner of in the Kentucky Derby history with seven winners. Seven winners. And it all uh, began about 25 years ago. And Baffert is uh, moving along, as is Johnny Velasquez, Matt. John Velasquez, Johnny V, as we like to call him, has now won four Kentucky Derbies uh, about a decade ago in the 2011 edition uh, we were wondering if Johnny V was ever going to win a derby. He's won four of the last 11 runnings, Matt. And I think once again, Johnny V did the right thing. Now, Rock Your World, maybe the horse we thought was most likely to be on the early lead. He got he got the old Malachi crunch at the gate, Matt, and it, and it hurt his chances for the race, certainly. But it also meant that he was not going to be one of the horses pressing this early pace. Yeah, Brian, that's for sure. And, and, and a good bit was made of it. There were photos that, it, you know, when he uh, came out of the gate that Rosario very, very briefly lost, uh, lost one of the irons, got back there. But in the meantime, as you said, he got bumped on both sides. And uh, uh, there he was at the back of the field and uh, uh, essential quality at the back, towards the back of the field. And others didn't go, and off went uh, Johnny V and Medina Spirit. Yeah, Medina Spirit was able to get the lead. I'm, I'm not going to say he was loose on the lead, but he he's a horse mm -hmm. who, who does not like other horses to pass him. He gets very, very tough. And uh, with Mandaloon being the only horse really to pressure him early at all, uh, it made his job much easier. He uh, was resolute all the way out to the wire. Let's start talking about these other horses. Mandaloon was a wild card for me. I didn't want to bet him off that poor Louisiana Derby effort. Looked good since he's been to Churchill Downs and he ran a very good race, Matt. I thought the, uh, the, the, the horse I like best, Hot Rod Charlie, ran a good race. I thought Essential Quality ran a good race. Yeah, Brian. Uh, um, and I think the fact that Mandaloon turned out to be 26 to one was a reflection of what you just said, that a lot of people were hesitant to uh, uh, put a lot of money on that horse after the run in the Louisiana Derby. But it turned out, you know, horses from that Louisiana Derby, Mandaloon, Hot Rod Charlie, ran very well. Yeah, yeah, the Louisiana Derby was a race I liked a lot going in, and I like it even more coming out. Certainly, that was a key race with Hot Rod Charlie, Mandaloon, and uh, uh, Obesis, uh, my top long shot, rallied up for fifth. So the Louisiana Derby proved to be a big race. Midnight Bourbon was sixth, Matt. Midnight Bourbon was another horse we thought might get out there, but uh, didn't quite break real, real uh, well. And then Mike Smith didn't push him at all for the lead, so... Another reason why Medina Spirit was uh, was able to take advantage of the pace. Yeah, it was just a series of things. I think a lot of the, you know, I, I think a lot of the jockeys uh, coming out of the gate of the Derby, and, and probably for good reason, are concerned about getting out safely and, and 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 not getting bumped around. But you know, in doing that, they they kind of lose the sight of the prize, which is uh, in this case was Medina Spirit uh, heading to the lead. Yeah, yeah, that, that was the prize. And with a horse like this, who's bred for a distance and it likes to fight, even though he was well beaten by Life is Good two races back, even though he was be well beaten by Rocky World last race, 
He got the trip in the Kentucky Derby and he proved himself a very good horse. He's never been worse than second in his career. He moves on to the Preakness, a Kentucky Derby winner, a very game Kentucky Derby winner. To the to the victors go the spoils. That's Bob Baffert and team and Johnny Velasquez. Matt, speaking of Johnny Velasquez, though, it was an absolutely huge two-day uh, weekend there for Velasquez because not only did he ride a big race uh, to win a, a tough Kentucky Derby with the 12-to-1 shot Medina Spirit, but I thought, uh, you know, people people are, are, are in love with Malathot now and, and for good reason, the Kentucky Oaks winner, but I thought Johnny Velasquez's ride on Malathot was also very, very good and probably underrated. Yeah, uh, no mistakes for sure. Uh... Uh, from Johnny V in the Kentucky Oaks, also uh, a Malathot, you know, a, a, a super talented horse, Pletcher, uh, again, calling her uh, a superstar, uh, which is un unlike him to spout off about horses like that, um, is the kind of horse, she's not flashy, Brian. Uh, she's a determined, talented horse, as we've seen in both of her store starts this year, coming down the lane with a determined move and, and does kind of does just enough to, to get victories. Um, at least on Friday in the, on the Derby weekend, I had a good day because I loved Malathot in there and, and had a, a whole bunch of wagers, uh, on Friday that I cashed on Malathot, but, uh, some of the, the two day wagers, uh, with the Kentucky Oaks winner didn't pan out for me after the Derby. Yeah, that's right, Matt. I'm glad you did cash on Malathot. So the one thing about Malathot, I, I, I told people, you know, there, there wasn't a better looking horse uh, among the three-year-olds getting ready for the Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks. In fact, somebody said, who's the best looking Kentucky Derby horse? And I said, Malathot. Uh, that's how good she is. So uh, in that respect, she is flashy. The daughter, Curlin, now five for five. I was worried, and this is why I tried to beat the favorite in the Kentucky Oaks. I was worried that she would be left with too much to do. And uh, they were in danger of that happening uh, quickly out of the gate because she was in between horses. And what Velasquez did was he threaded the needle and he moved her up into the top half of the field. As soon as I saw that, I knew she was a huge threat because Velasquez got her up into fifth, six on the outside and in a perfect spot for her to make her rally. And that's what she did beautifully, a beautiful filly. She reminds me, Matt, a lot of Rags to Riches, who several years ago won the Kentucky Oaks while still relatively lightly raced. And uh, uh, coincidentally, when she went into the Belmont as her next race after the Kentucky Oaks win, uh, she beat Curlin, who's the sire of Malathot. Uh, but uh, I have every reason in the world to believe that Fletcher is at least really considering running this filly uh, in the Belmont. She looks like a filly can, that can go all day. We have to talk about search results a little bit. She was previously unbeaten as well, only three for three, but the daughter of Flatter uh, did everything perfectly in the Kentucky Oaks. She stalked the pace. She moved at the right time. Chad Brown had her ready in her fourth lifetime race and only a uh, really strong performance by Malathot got her beat in this Kentucky Oaks. Yeah, she uh, represented herself really well. Uh, like you said, perfect trip, stalking, inherited the lead, uh, fought hard down the lane, but, you know, but Malathot was just too good. Yeah, too good. But search results clearly is a top-notch filly and, uh, uh, her gazelle, when she ran uh, clearly faster than the Wood Memorial Colts, I think that uh, played out a little bit in the Kentucky Oaks. But it was Malathot, and she is a superstar moving forward. All right, folks, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, now is the time to do so. We got a lot of good content coming still for the Triple Crown, the Preakness, and the Belmont. So uh, turn those notifications on, subscribe now. Matt, we are going to move right into the Preakness of course, this is a fluid situation. We are nine days away from the middle jewel at Pimlico, Matt. But uh, we feel pretty good about the 11 horses. We don't know of any others that might sneak in, but usually it happens. We feel pretty good that these 11 horses we have listed here on our Preakness list are probable. And of course, it starts with trainer Bob Baffert and Medina Spirit, first of all. Absolutely. And, and you know, you have to sit, you have to talk about Bob Baffert's record with horses moving from the Kentucky Derby to the Preakness. And, and Bob Baffert has won the Preakness seven times. 
Six of those times were with his Kentucky Derby winners. And until last year, with the altered uh, Triple Crown, when the Preakness came a month after the Derby instead of the two weeks, until then, Bob Baffert had never lost the Preakness with one of his Kentucky Derby winners. And here we are with Medina Spirit. Here we are with Medina Spirit, yeah. So last year was a little bit different and authentic. Hey, he didn't get beaten much uh, in that Preakness, of course. His Swiss skydiver just barely beat him in last year's Preakness. So Baffert has a great record in the Preakness. Point Given was his other Preakness winner, who may have been one of his very best uh, horses, who, he, who, of course, didn't win the Derby. But Medina Spirit comes back. I do think, Matt, there might be a whole new quality in this Preakness at least on paper, because in Kentucky Derby, we thought there was enough speed there. But uh, I tell you what, if we're looking down this list real quick, Concert Tour, uh, Midnight Bourbon, I think, changes his tactics in the Preakness. Cattle River, real speed horse, even Mandaloon, uh, and maybe one or two others. This looks like a fast pace to me developing. Okay. I, I hear you, Brian. It looks on paper like a fast developing pace, but quite frankly, I'm getting tired of looking for fast paces that don't develop because the jockeys grab their horses or whatever, for whatever reason, and horses get loose on the lead. It, it's getting to be the way things are in racing in 2021. Yeah, we'll see, Matt. Uh, you could be right. I, I don't forecast Medina Spirit alone on the lead in the Preakness, but we'll see. One of the horses I expect to be out there is his stable mate, Concert Tour. They don't want to take Concert Tour out of his game. He's a different ownership and, and, and a horse who really has a big chance in the Preakness. A horse who probably will be the second choice, Matt. Uh, Concert Tour has done some good things, including an impressive Rebel win. He was upset last time, though, in the Arkansas Derby. Yeah. That's for sure. And like you said, different ownership, uh, a concert tour is owned by Gary and Mary West, uh, uh, you know, of maximum security fame uh, over the last couple of years and lots of other good horses. So, uh, uh, you know, he's got to run his his style, which, as you said, Brian, seems to be most successful uh, when he's part of the pace. Yeah, and, and he's a horse of, of talent, and he and he, he rested through the Kentucky Derby, so I think he's a horse you have to respect. Uh, it would be odd to see one stable mate beat the Kentucky Derby winning stable mate, but it's happened before. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, uh, Timber Country uh, beating Thunder Gulch years ago for for D Wayne Lucas, so it's not out of the question, especially when we're talking about different owners. Uh, Concert Tour has the talent; he'll need to step up from that Arkansas Derby, but I think he's going to be probably the second choice mandaloon matt uh I, I guess we can draw a line now through that louisiana derby if you draw a line through the louisiana derby he looks like a real uh threat in the preakness yeah he he ran great in the derby the second place finish um uh ran hard down the stretch uh, held off uh, uh a couple good really good horses in hot rod charlie and essential quality so yeah he's got to be a threat in there and and historically the Horses that come from the Kentucky Derby are usually the winners of the Preakness. Usually, that's true. Uh, Mandaloon also was part of Brad Cox's uh, first Kentucky Derby, and I thought Cox did really well without winning with Mandaloon and Essential Quality both running very well. We'll see how close Mandaloon is. If, if there is more speed, like I think there might be in the Preakness, maybe Mandaloon is fourth or fifth early and uh, see if he can jump on that, get first jump on that fast pace one horse i expect to show more speed in the preakness matt he almost has to than he did in the kentucky derby is midnight bourbon midnight bourbon just didn't get out of the gate real well and mike smith never pushed him but he kind of uh he kept he kept chugging along he passed horses i don't think he was real close to the winners at the end and i don't think he necessarily ran a huge race in the derby but all things considered away from his normal style midnight bourbon finishing six in the kentucky derby was not a bad result yeah, and I think it's fair to say at this point from what we saw in the mornings before the Derby uh, that that Midnight Bourbon is not an easy horse to handle. Yeah, he he, he got loose uh, one day uh, through the Aspison stable from the uh, 
from his groom there. So that got a little hairy in between the uh, uh, barns there for Steve Asmussen. But Midnight Bourbon, we expect him back after a unlucky, let's say, sixth place finish in the Kentucky Derby. All right, we talked about concert tours, the new shooter that will get bet most in the Preakness, but there are a bunch more, Matt. Let's start with Crowded Trade, who comes from the barn of Chad Brown, the son of more than ready. He's only started three times. Uh, can we start comparing this horse a little bit to cloud computing who upset the Preakness a few years ago? Um, I, I guess in that it's, you know, uh, from the Chad Brown barn, but I guess most of all at this point, um, we saw that the horses, you know, from the, uh, the New York Derby trail did not show themselves particularly well in the Derby. So uh, would really make me hard to endorse crowded trade. Yeah, Crowded Trade to me is a little bit interesting. Cloud Computing, by the way, was very lightly raced and he was let go at 13 to 1 in the Preakness. Crowded Trade, I could see sitting in the middle of the pack and making a move because I think he is a horse that can move forward. Just like highly motivated a little bit, though, I wonder if he wants uh, classic distances. So we'll need to see that. But I do see some similarities with Cloud Computing, who was able to rally uh, into a pretty fast paced Preakness. Crowded trade could be that horse if he makes another move forward. Couldn't quite get the job done in either the Gotham or the Wood, but in the second and third lifetime races, those weren't bad performances. The next horse on our list, Matt, we already talked about a bunch. That's Cattle River, and, and I think the son of Hard Spawn, also trained by Brad Cox. Uh, they, they learned that he just doesn't want to be behind horses in the Rebel. And then he ran a different race in the Arkansas Derby, which makes me think he has to be. As long as he's in the race, he's still not 100% confirmed. But if he's in the race, he has to be speed in the Preakness. Yeah, I think Brad Cox is getting close to making a decision about uh, uh, which of his horses or both of his horses are going to go in the Preakness. Yeah, both of his horses uh, would have a shot. Caddo River included. I still think he's a talented speed horse although we're looking at the Baffert speed to deal with in here. Let's talk about some rallies, Matt. First, you got uh, Ron Bauer, who is the son of Torland Candy from the barn of Mike McCarthy. I said after the Bluegrass, he didn't want to be that close to the lead. So the fact that he ran third behind Essential Quality and Crowded, uh, I'm sorry, Highly Motivated, was a pretty good effort. Now with more speed in here, going to mile 316th, do we look at the uh, El Camino Real Derby as a serious long shot threat in the Preakness? I, I think we have to, to give him a, a serious look. I, I do like that uh, McCarthy said, you know, I, I'm just going to pass, uh, you know, pass on the Derby on the 20 horse field. I think my horse is going to be much better suited to uh, the smaller field in the Preakness. Mike McCarthy is, has won some big races and, and seems to make good decisions along those lines. Yeah, former Todd Pletcher assistant, Mike McCarthy. And I think Ron Bauer is an interesting long shot if this is a strong pace. The next horse on the list is his old boss, his horse, Todd Pletcher. Matt, is it possible that Todd Pletcher started four horses in the Kentucky Derby? And the best of all was, was saved for the Preakness in unbridled honor. Um, I don't know about that, Brian, but, uh, you know, he certainly, uh, unbridled honor certainly was not really part of the Kentucky Derby trail like some of those other horses uh, the, that were in the Derby for Pletcher, uh, uh, lightly raced, um, ran a really nice second in the Lexington just before the Derby behind the much ballyhooed King Fury who ended up uh, uh, spiking a fever and then the fever came back so he missed the Derby and now he has to miss the Preakness also. Um, typically, uh, uh, Pletcher uh, doesn't send many horses to the Preakness. He skips it and goes to the Belmont Stakes, but uh, I think Pletcher's got other horses with the Belmont in mind, so he's going to go for the Preakness with unbridled honor. Yeah, and I tell you what, Pletcher has a has a deep bench this year, and this horse is interesting. An honor code, son of honor code, who always rallies. He's getting better. Like I keep saying, I think there's going to be pace in here. I thought his performance in the Lexington was really good. Before I heard that King Fury was not going to be in the Preakness, I was looking forward to betting King Fury in the Preakness. Now that I know he's out, maybe the horse that was finishing fast in second behind him is another viable long shot threat. 
uh, if we can get some real rally going in the Preakness. Another horse who wants to come from back, Matt, is keep me in mind. I don't know if you kept him in mind when you were looking down the stretch, but he was one of the horses running down the stretch of the Kentucky Derby. He, uh, he rallied up for seventh. That, that doesn't sound that good, but he passed a lot of horses, was finishing well in the Derby, almost got sixth behind uh, in front of Midnight Bourbon. Again, another horse who wants to come from the clouds. Yeah, he, he is a real, real deep closer, um, has been throughout his career, needs the right setup. And as you said, passed a lot of tired horses down the stretch uh, uh, in the Derby. Yeah, uh, next two horses on the list, I expect to be long shots, kind of uh, fillers for the field. But hey, Ram for the tr uh, trainer D. Wayne Lucas. Lucas has won a bunch of Preaknesses, Matt, the son of American Pharaoh. Obviously, he's getting better. He won on Derby Day, although he wasn't the best-looking three-year-old allowance winner uh, on that Kentucky Derby card, for me, at least. Yeah, he had a nice allowance win, as you said, on the Derby undercard. Um, and uh, at this point, Lucas is deciding with Ram whether he's going to go in the Preakness or whether he's going to go in the Sir Barton. And if he's in the Preakness, he's a long shot, and I think he deserves to be, as is the horse from Japan, Matt. Uh, what's his name? France Godeina. France Godeina is a, a, a American bred uh, through and through, a son of Will Take Charge out of a Curlin mare. Had some decent results in Japan at two, but his only race this year, they said he had a little trouble, but he was sixth in the UAE Derby. He looks like a long shot to me, but I heard that he's picking up Joel Rosario, one of your favorite riders for the Preakness. Yeah, and, and that certainly isn't a bad thing, picking up Rosario. Um, but like you said, uh, uh, sixth in the UAE Derby. Um, I don't know, maybe they're, uh, maybe they're over here and they've got their eyes on the, the Belmont because I think there's some kind of bonus involved with the Belmont Stakes and horses from Japan. Yeah, that's right. That's right. If he, if he gets a Belmont win and he's prepping in the Preakness, it looks like, he's going to get... A big bonus, as Matt said. Hey, Matt, early Preakness pick from you. I, 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 I'm, I'm struggling to decide who I like yet. I got a lot of work to do, and it, we got to make sure this field uh, works out like we think so on paper. But right now, who's your pick? Well, like you said, I, I certainly want to wait to see uh, on Monday when entries are due for the Preakness. We'll have a better idea about the field. That's not when the draw is, but that's when uh, entries are due. Um, for the for the Preakness, um, it, it's a tough call for me at this point. But certainly, in the back of my mind, is going to be the fact that uh, it uh, it is the horses that have run in the Derby that have had the most success in the Preakness. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Without saying who you like best uh, so far. I, I, I am definitely looking at unbridled honor. I'll tell you what, the other Pletcher, uh, I like that uh, race he ran in the Lexington. I think we're going to get a strong pace in the Preakness. So I'm going to be looking at unbridled honor in my tickets, provided he actually runs. Uh, speaking of actually running, Matt, we got a lot of good stakes at Belmont. This uh, We're finally talking about Belmont for the first time in 2021, Matt. Uh, there's uh, the vagrancy. There's the... Uh, Man of War, there's the Bogey, some of my favorite turf horses, uh, Gufo, I, I'm a big Gufo guy. Gufo returns in the Man of War. Uh, you got Harvey's Little Goyle, who's just one of my favorite horses, period. And I don't know if you can call it just a turf horse because she's done some big things on dirt. She'll return in the Bogey, Matt. Uh, something to look forward there in both races. But we're gonna stick with the three-year-olds to talk about the Peter Pan. Is, does that sound good? Yeah, absolutely, Brian. And I'm going out. I'm going to Belmont on Saturday. Why don't you drive up from Kentucky uh, and join me? Uh, actually, I, I think I have a tennis match. Uh, okay. uh, unfortunately, early in the day, I'll, I'll be watching the Belmont. Don't worry, or the Peter Pan. Don't worry. But early in the day, I have some tennis to take care of. All right, Matt. I, I think we start this with the familiar name again, Todd Pletcher. He's got two in here, and I think the horse that might sneak into favoritism despite his one bad performance in stakes company is promise keeper, uh, a still very promising son of constitution. Yeah, Brian, it's an interesting small field uh, um, in uh, Peter Pan, which is the local prep race for the Belmont stakes. We can remember back to uh, 2014 when Tonalist uh, 
went from the Peter Pan to, uh, to win the Belmont Stakes. Um, it's a field where we've got three horses that, you know, did some running on the Kentucky Derby Trail and a couple of horses that are stakes winners. But I don't know, Brian, the, the, those horses to me seem to be, uh, uh, you know, we've seen them already. We know what they can do. I'm kind of looking for a new face in this race and, and promise keeper to me, maybe that interesting new face. Yeah, there's a lot to be said about Promise Keeper. In fact, I would I would think he's the horse to beat in here. This is a, a six horse field, as Matt mentioned, and there's not much speed at all. And Promise Keeper has at least wired one of his two uh, easy wins. Now in the Tampa Bay Derby, you know, he had a little trouble at the gate. He had a little trouble during the race, but still it was a very poor performance because he backed way out of it pretty early in that Tampa Bay Derby. So he'll have to improve. But his win last time at Keeneland was pretty darn, pretty darn nice. He came from slightly off the pace. I expect him to show a whole bunch more speed uh, on Saturday, and I think he'll take a lot of beating. The other Pletcher, Matt, is Overtook, who was a million-dollar yearling purchase, uh, uh, and not, another one of those regally bred sons of Curlin. Uh, he rallied last time we saw him for second in the Withers. He was improving. Uh, but then Pletcher said he just wasn't working very well and he took him out of contention for the Wood Memorial. So now we see him after three months from that Withers. He's a horse who could be getting good. Uh, I don't like the fact that he has zero speed, though. Yeah, Brian. And, and certainly uh, a horse that, you know, uh, with the million dollar purchase and, and uh, 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 what he's done on the track. He's another one in this field that took a while to break his maiden. He, he needed three tries, which was, uh, which was true from a, from a bunch of them in, in some of those maiden races. He was running against known agenda and greatest honor and Nova rags um, ended up finishing second in the withers, but you know, it's been a while since he's been on the track. Yeah, Pletcher said he's working well again after not working well before the Wood Memorial, so we'll see. Uh, another one who comes from pretty far back is risk-taking, That Risk-taking looked great. First two tries with blinkers and a nice maiden win, and then he won the Withers pretty easily over overtook. Uh, but in the Wood Memorial, it was disappointing where he never really got rolling. Yeah, it, it was kind of a head-scratcher there and, and not a uh typical kind of uh, performance from a Chad Brown horse that's going into the race uh, well regarded. So I'm not sure what to expect in the Peter Pan from risk taking. And, and that's kind of another one of the reasons why I'm looking away from uh, these horses that were on the Derby trail earlier on. Yeah, and like Overtook, uh, I, I think the pace of this one turn, a lot of these horses are, are dropping back to one turn and there's not a lot of speed in here. I think that hurts the chances of risk taking an Overtook who will get a lot of money. The one horse who's been on the Derby Trail, as you say, that I am liking is Nova Rags from the Belmont Barn, Matt. He has a win at Belmont Park, which came in his debut last year at one turn. And he's the only horse in the race who has a win at Belmont Park. I think he ran against some better horses down in Florida, at least uh, at least last time when he was fourth in the Florida Derby without a perfect trip. He has some uh, tactical speed too to uh, be out there with the Pletcher horse. So Nova Rags might be the one that I like very best in here. Yeah, I, I think his races in Florida, he, we, we know he, uh, like you said, broke his maiden at Belmont Park and then went to Florida won the seven furlong Pasco, was second in the Sam F. Davis, fourth in the Florida Derby, which had a really quality field. Uh, um, Pletcher said, no, nah, we're, not, we're not going Derby with this horse. And, and now he's back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the Belmont trainee uh, will enjoy the cut down back to uh, one turn for this Peter Pan, even though he's got... Uh, distance breeding he looks he looks pretty strong to me at one turn so I like him a lot in other words you gotta respect Matt is Wolfie's Dinah Ghost uh, I tell you what he won his only start even though he's bred kind of as a distance horse for trainer Tom Albatroni and that race was back in November so six months away but if you look at the horses he beat in that race there's a bunch of stakes horses that finished behind him in that maiden win 
Yeah, and, and, and there's a lot of interesting things about that. As you mentioned, in that maiden race, he beat, uh, he beat Weyburn, who was supposed to be in the Peter Pan, but got a, but but spiked a, a, a little bit of a fever. So uh, he has to miss the race. And, and uh, Weyburn, you know, won on the Derby Trail in New York. And and Jimmy Jerkins says, no, nah, we're not going to go the Derby. We're going to go the Belmont. But anyway, um, Wolfie's Dynasty is from the barn of Tom Albertrani. And Albertrani almost never Brian wins with a debut winner. He is a, is an old school kind of trainer who likes to run his horses into shape. And uh, here goes uh, uh, Wolfie's Dynasty going six furlongs and blows that field away, as you said, as a horse who is bred to go longer. Uh, went to Florida, I didn't see him run again. And now here he is coming back again in the Peter Pan. And with, uh, you know, Albert Trani, I might have expected, oh, he'll, he'll find a nice allowance race, give him an easier spot. So I'm curious about this uh, half brother to Sadler's Joy. Yeah, Sadler's Joy, of course, could run all day. The, the fact that Albert Trani is running him in the Peter Pan makes me think that Wolfie Steinegost is doing really well and Albert Trani loves him. So uh, certainly a live long shot here, only making his second start his first of the year. I am the law is a maiden, Matt, the only other horse in the race. I think he's a maiden, uh, the son of Mishawish, with some potential to be good, but probably a tough spot for him here. Yeah, I agree. Uh, um, and trainer John Terranova is really good with young horses. He's got a third and then a second in maiden special weights, special weights at Aqueduct. But uh, even in this small field, it's an ambitious spot. Yeah, an ambitious spot. Matt, I'm going with the horses who have shown some speed in their races. So I, I think uh, Nova Rags is my top pick, but I want to use them with both Promise Keeper and Wolfie Steinegost, who showed some tactical speed in that maiden win way back when. So my top horse will be Nova Rags, just slightly over Promise Keeper. My top long shot has to be Wolfie Steinegost. Yeah, my top pick is going to be Promise Keeper because, as I said, I'm, I'm looking for a fresh face. And if that win uh, in that allowance race at Keeneland is any indication of better things to come, Promise Keeper could be tough in the Peter Pan. And for me also, Wolfie's Dying Ghost is my long shot. Yeah, he seems like the uh, the long shot that a lot of people are going to jump on as their top long shot in this Peter Pan. And folks, the Peter Pan has traditionally fed horses to the Belmont Stakes. I don't think this year will be any different. I think some of these Peter Pan horses will come back uh, uh, three weeks, four weeks later for the uh, Belmont Stakes. And speaking of the Belmont, Matt, we didn't really say it yet. Let's address this. Is Medina Spirit our next Triple Crown winner? Does he have a reasonable shot to, to become the sport's next triple crown winner. I don't know about that, Brian, one race at a time, but I think he's got a reasonable chance of winning the Preakness. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go a step farther and say, no, I don't think he's going to be a triple crown winner. Uh, we'll see. You, Matt's right. He certainly does have a shot to win the Preakness and might very well be the favorite. All right, Matt, that's our show. Uh, let's, before we go, let's do this. I want to get a good, Good, mind you, a good parting shot from you, my friend. Oh, geez, Brian, is that implying that my parting shots haven't been good uh, in the past? I, so I'm going to make sure this one's going to be good, and I'm just going to focus on thanking our producer, uh, Tony Bada Bing, for uh, uh, helping to make our show better and exciting and getting us through those big Kentucky Derby shows. Yeah, Tony, Tony put in a lot of work and we sure do appreciate it. We also appreciate race graphics from Candace Curtis. We appreciate our sponsor, Matt. It's the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. And folks, most of all, we appreciate you tuning in to Horse Center. We love to do the show for you. We'll be back next week with a real big Preakness preview show. Don't miss it right here on Horse Center. In the meantime, cash those tickets big.